Following 2022's X and Pearl, Mia Goth returns as Maxine Minx in the third and supposedly final installment of Ty West's X series. Let's talk about Maxine. guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new movie, Maxine. This is playing in theaters right now, and uh, it is the third and potentially final installment of the X trilogy. I say that because Ty West, the writer and director of the series, has mentioned uh, that he would be open to uh, creating more adventures for Mia Goth as Maxine Minx uh, in the future. So this may not be the final installment, but for now, uh, we have it as such. 2022 saw the release of both X and Pearl, because they were filmed back to back. Um, and so now, a couple of years later, we finally uh, have put the the uh, third installment out, Maxine. We're going to talk about this in just a moment, but first let me welcome you into Damn Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. We do movie and TV reviews on the channel, and just about every day, something new goes up. So there's always a lot to check out, uh, whether it be movie-related or television, and uh, you can subscribe down below, and of course, click that like button and comment. All that stuff, of course, helps the channel out greatly, and I certainly do appreciate it. All right, so Maxine Minx uh, is back, and uh, we have a lot of new people to the series as well. In addition to uh, the Mia Goth character, we've got uh, Elizabeth Debicki, Moses Sumney, Michelle Monaghan, uh, Kevin Bacon, Lily Collins, Bobby Cannavale, uh, Halsey, and Giancarlo Esposito. Always love seeing him and uh, really kind of hamming it up in his role here. Um, so this takes place in the 80s. Uh, we've had a, a few different eras uh, so far through the, uh, the Maxine Minx career. Um, and in the 70s, uh, in the movie X, uh, she was a porn star, an adult star. Um, and here we have the 80s. And I would say based on the, uh, the music being played and some of the references, I would say we're pretty heavily into the mid 80s, like 83, 84, 85 era. Um, but she is now looking for mainstream success in the Hollywood studio system, uh, while also being targeted by a mysterious killer, uh, that may have something to do with her past. Um, and so we, it, so with that in mind, the whole thing about her past, I would say you probably don't need to have seen either of the other two films in the franchise to understand this movie, to know what's going on. Um, I think it may help, but I feel like they uh, definitely give you enough of a background um, in what has happened in some of these other movies and what has happened in Maxine's past um, that I don't think viewers will be lost if they have not seen those other two movies. So I'll put that out there right away. However, that being said, this is also the weakest of the three movies. So, um, and it's not bad. It's going to be a positive grade. And, uh, you know, at the end of this video, I'll give you my actual letter grade for it, but, uh, it's still a positive grade, but, uh, I think those other two films were a little bit more inventive, um, a bit less routine. I think they were a little more thrilling as well. So let's get into sort of the, uh, the pros and the cons of this particular film, Maxine. So Mia Goth is uh, the easiest of the pros uh, for this and really the whole series. Um, she's so great as Maxine. And, and she, you know, appeared in, uh, you know, movies here or there, um, you know, in, in the years leading up to this. But uh, this trilogy has absolutely cemented her as not only a scream queen, but a, a viable Hollywood uh, actress. I think she is really uh, going to have a bright future ahead of her, and maybe it is going to be in these uh, more independent films like A24 puts out, or, uh, you know, I think if she really wanted to, she could uh, make a name for herself in some big budget features as well. She is just so talented in all three of these movies, and, and all three really are, well, X, I, I would say, is probably more of an ensemble, but Pearl and this, I would say, are really just like the Mia Goth show through and through. Yes, people come and go, uh, and she interacts with them, but uh, she's in just about every scene of this movie. Um, so, uh, you know, she's really, really holding it together. She would be the reason to see this, and uh, a reason that maybe if the, the cons for some may outweigh some of the pros, I think her performance is enough um, you know, for you to, to really appreciate this movie, um, you know, because of a wonderful performance. So that's, that's the easy one. Um, I will say I do also like the atmosphere, you know, look, I, I you know, I'm a sucker for a movie or a show that takes place in the eighties if it's done well. And this is done, I think, well, uh, in the respect that it's, uh, going a little corny sometimes, 
on purpose, though, um, with some of the references and all of that, um, that is a, you know, specific choice by uh, the writer-director Ty West, I think. So, you know, he's kind of embracing that era. Um, and, and more than just, you know, the music and the culture, but the actual sort of Hollywood industry of the time. Um, and, and I thought that was sort of interesting as well. And we've seen this kind of throughout uh, these movies, sort of looking at uh, the the fame system and the Hollywood system um, through, you know, his eyes, Ty West's eyes, and through uh, Maxine's eyes that give each era kind of a different perspective, I guess, of, uh, you know, why or how somebody might make it big uh, in Hollywood during that time period. Um, and certainly she's got baggage with her in this coming from the porn industry. But look, you know, it's it's been done. It reminded me of, you know, Tracy Lord tried her hand at, uh, you know, f real mainstream stuff uh, in the 90s. And she was, of course, a, a huge porno star um, before. So it, it has been accomplished, you know, mildly. Um, but she she actually rattles off a whole handful of people who, you know, got naked early in their careers. Maybe not specifically did porn, but, um, you know, got naked and uh, did sex scenes or whatever in more mainstream movies. And look at, you know, look at them now kind of thing. Um, and it's, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But look, the negatives here are uh, that I think this is the uh, the most routine of all three of these films. Um, you know, Pearl especially was was so uh, kind of daring and, and, and different. Um, while paying homage to a classic. And if you've seen that, you know what I mean. Um, but, you know, here, it, it's just a, a pretty standard uh, slasher story. And with that in mind, we actually don't get a lot of killings. This is, uh, you know, certainly, I think, more of a thriller than it is a horror film, straight up. Because um, there just isn't enough in that regard um, to, to really, I, I think hook people that are strictly looking for, you know, the next kill and aren't so interested with story. All three movies, I guess you could say, are like that as well, though. Um, but with that in mind, there isn't really a scene here that can compare to some of the most memorable scenes from those first two films. However, there are a couple of deaths, I think, that uh, are memorable and may stick with us. Um, the ending, I think, and we're not going to do spoilers, but I think it's going to be divisive because I think it is... Um, Pretty safe overall, um, and I think it might leave a little bit to be desired. Um, I'll just say that. I didn't mind it so much, but again, I do think it's probably, you know, the weakest of all three. But look, Kevin Bacon is having a blast lately with <laughs> these sort of villainous roles. Um, you know, we just saw him in Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F., uh, and, and now he's, he's here, and he's really sort of, uh, you know, chewing up that scenery with the best of them. And I already mentioned uh, Giancarlo Esposito having a blast as well. Um, so look, the performances here aren't the issue. I think it's the more uh, routine aspect of the film and the script on the whole. But overall, like I said, this is a positive grade. I, I think this is a worthy, uh, you know, ending to the series if indeed this is going to be the final installment. But, you know, whereas I think the others are definitely more in the A- minus and B-plus type of camp, uh, this one fell a little bit short for me. I will, for a great performance from Mia Goth, uh, once again in the Maxine role, I will leave it with uh, a, a slightly higher grade than it may have been in another actress's hands. I leave Maxine with a B. A lot to like here, um, but but definitely a little bit of a letdown from uh, what we saw before in the trilogy. All right. Thank you so much for watching Dan Reviews It. I'll see you next time. Bye.